Hey guys, I'm going to be reading Lesson 24, Anchor Text, today, called Owen and Mazzy, The True Story of a Remarkable Friendship. It's by Isabella Hatcuff, Craig, Hatcuff, Craig Hatcuff, and Dr. Paula Kahumbu, and the photographs are by Peter Crest. So let's meet the authors. You have Isabella Hatcuff, Craig Hatcuff, and Dr. Paula Him. Kayumbu, sorry. Isabella Hatcoff was a six years old when she saw a photo of Owen and Mazzy in the newspaper. She decided to write about them with the help of her father, Craig. Dr. Paula Kahumbu is an ecologist in Kenya. She's responsible for the health and safety of Owen and Mazzy. Let's meet the photographer, Peter Gress. Peter Gress took the newspaper photo that led the Hatcuffs and Dr. Kahumbu to write Owen and Mazzy. Gress works not only as a photographer, but also as a radio news reporter. He travels the world covering important events. So we're going to compare and contrast similarities between two the animals, okay? So that's our skill this week. It is a narrative nonfiction, so it's actually real factual information, okay? So we're going to have a good time looking at that kind of stuff because we always like factual information. So here's Owen and Mazzy. You can't really see much, but here's your essential question. How can animal behavior be like human behavior? So while we're reading this, please think about this question because you can kind of maybe get a little bit of a insight on that. Okay. So sorry. This story began in Malindi, Kenya on the east coast of Africa in December 2004. A pod of hippopotamuses was grazing along the shore of the Indian Ocean. Suddenly, giant surging waves from a tsunami rushed high onto the beach. The powerful waves caused destruction for miles around. After the water went down, only one hippo remained and it was stranded on a reef. Hundreds of villagers worked for hours to rescue the 600 pound baby. Finally, a man named Owen caught the animal, which was later named after him. The rescuers wrapped the hippo in a net and placed him in a pickup truck. People weren't sure where Owen should be taken next. They called Holler Park, an animal sanctuary about 50 miles away near the city of Mombasa. Dr. Paula Kahumbu, the manager, immediately offered Owen a place to live there. She explained that he could never be returned to the wild. Since he was still a baby, he wouldn't have learned yet how to fend for himself, and he would never be welcomed into another hippopod. He would be seen as an intruder and attacked. But they would take good care of him in Holler Park. Dr. Paula offered to drive to Melindy herself to bring Owen to his new home. So this is where, this is Kenya, okay? Here is Melindy, which is what happened. That's where, he, that's where, it, um, where the tsunami happened, okay? So that's where that is. And they wanna drive him to Mombasa, okay? So it's about right through here is where they're taking him to. Dr. Paula knew she would need help. She asked the chief animal taker, Stephen Toe, to come along with her. She knew that Stephen had a special way with animals. Some people said he could even talk to them. Dr. Paula and Stephen quickly set off in her small truck to Melindy. Meanwhile, ecologist Sabine Byer got to work with others at Holler Park to prepare for Owen's arrival. When Dr. Paula and Stephen arrived in Melindy, they helped her move the nets and lead Owen out of the pickup. But Owen became angrier than ever and charged at the people gathering around. They tried to help him calm down by wrapping a blanket around his head. That way he wouldn't see the things that were upsetting him. But Owen was angry about that too. After many hours, about a dozen rescuers managed to move Owen from the pickup into Dr. Paula's truck, tying him so that he would be safe during the long drive to Holler Park. You can see this is Dr. Paula, Stephen, and Sabine were eager to help the orphan hippo. So these are those three people. Meanwhile, Sabine and other, co and other workers prepared a large enclosure for Owen. They chose a part of the park that had a pond and a mud hall at wallow, as well as tall trees and brush, everything a hippo could want. The area was already home to a number of bush bucks, vervet monkeys, and a giant adabra tortoise called Mazzy. Mazzy, whose name means wise old man in the Swahili language, was the oldest creature in the park. At about 130 years of age, he had been alive since before Stephen's great-grandmother was born. He wasn't very friendly, except to Stephen, who seemed to know just what he liked, such as getting tickled under the chin, which is what Stephen is doing there. Otherwise, Mazzy kept to himself. No one could have guessed how Mazzy's life was about to change. Finally, Dr. Paul and Stephen arrived with Owen, who was now weak and exhausted. As soon as the ropes that held him were untied, Owen scrambled from the truck directly to Mazzy, resting in a corner of the enclosure. Owen crouched behind Mazzy the way baby hippos often hide behind their mothers for protection. At first, Mazzy wasn't happy about this attention. He hissed at Owen and crawled away, but Owen, who could easily keep up with the old tortoise, did not give up. 
Slowly, as the night went on, Mazzy began to accept his new companion. When the park workers checked on him in the morning, Owen was snuggled up against Mazzy, and Mazzy didn't seem to mind at all. So at first it says Mazzy crawled away, but Owen wouldn't give up. So this is Mazzy and Owen. Over the next few days, Mazzy continued to crawl away and Owen continued to follow him. But sometimes it was Owen who would walk away from Mazzy, and Mazzy would follow. Bit by bit, Mazzy grew friendlier. At first, Owen wouldn't eat any of the leaves left out for him. Stephen and the other caretakers were worried that he would weaken even more. Then they noticed Owen feeding right beside Mazzy as if Mazzy were showing him how to eat. Or perhaps it was Mazzy's protective presence that helped Owen feel calm enough to eat. No one will ever know, but it was clear that the bond between Owen and Mazzy was helping the baby hippo to recover from being separated from his mother and stranded in the sea. So with Mazzy by his side, Owen began to eat. As the weeks went on, Owen and Mazzy spent more and more time together. Soon, they were inseparable. Their bond remains very strong to this day. They swim together, eat together, drink together, and sleep next to each other. They rub noses. Owen leads the way to different parts of the enclosure. Then Mazzy leads the way. Owen playfully nuzzles Mazzy's neck, and Mazzy stretches his neck forward, asking for more, just as he does when Stephen tickles him under the chin. Though both animals could easily injure each other, they are gentle with one another. A sense of trust has grown between them. So both hippos and tortoises love water, so they like to play in the water. Wildlife experts are still puzzled about how this unlikely friendship came to be. Most have never heard of a mammal such as Owen and a reptile such as Mazzy forming such a strong bond. Perhaps for Owen, it happened this way. Young hippos like Owen need their mothers in order to survive, and old slow tortoise like Mazzy can never protect Owen the way a fierce mother hippo could. But since Mazzy's coloring and rounded shape are similar to a hippo's, it's possible that to Owen, Mazzy looks like the hippo mother he needs. Harder to explain is the affection that Mazzy seems to show for Owen. Like most Aldabra tortoises, Mazzy had always preferred to be alone, but sometimes these tortoises live in groups, and perhaps Mazzy sees Owen as a fellow tortoise, the first tortoise he is willing to spend time with. Or perhaps Mazzy knows that Owen isn't a tortoise, but likes him anyway. The reasons are unclear, but science can't always explain what the heart already knows. Our most important friends are sometimes those we least expected. News of Owen and Mazzy's friendship quickly spread around the world. People all over have come to love Owen, who endured so much, yet never gave up. And Mazzy, who came, became Owen's friend when he needed one most. Their photographs have appeared in countless newspaper and magazine articles. Television programs and even a film documentary have been made about them. Visitors come to Holler Park every day to meet the famous friends. So Owen and Mazzy look out for each other. Owen's future is bright. Owen suffered a great loss, but with the help of many caring people and through his own extraordinary resilience, Owen has began, begun a new happy life. Most remarkable is the role that Mazzy has played. We'll never know for sure whether Owen sees Mazzy as a mother, a father, or a very good friend, but it really doesn't matter. What matters is that Owen isn't alone and neither is Mazzy. And that is the true story of Owen and Mazzy, two great friends. So we are focusing on comparing and contrasting when we're focusing on Owen and Mazzy and how they're alike and how they're different. So we've got a, quite a few factual information about them. We're also gonna talk about facts and opinions. A fact is a non-fiction statement. It's very true um, and an opinion, you know that as a thing that expresses thoughts and feelings. So a fact is Heller Park is in Kenya. We know that it's a fact. It's We can go to a map and we can see that. An opinion would be Heller Park is beautiful. Somebody else might not think that. So that's their opinion on things. And we're also gonna talk about author's word choice on things, okay? So we've talked like the author uses the word nurture and why would somebody use nurture because it's trying to say that they're taking care of them lovingly. Um, so talk about the word choice of what's going on in that, okay? So please reread the story, re-listen to the story as many times as you need um, for the rest of this week and um, make sure you're thinking about that essential question a little bit, okay?